so so do that too much. Actually, I don't think we need to. Yeah, okay. This how confirm must say. I thank you, Michael, again for hosting <laughs> our visa. Okay. And then, uh, like I think you all, all know this very going group really that. And then today is just one gem that I, it's a very simple gem, but I found it very interesting uh, called Frozen Record. Um, so maybe let, let, let me just share my slides, uh, the other one, and then we don't really need to see this one. Uh, but, uh, let me open now. My computer is slightly lagging. Okay, well, uh, let me close this one to prevent the lag. Present. And then share. And this one. Okay, can you see? Yeah, okay, I can see. so, yeah. so, uh, I just found this very interesting gem, and I found I found that it's very like it's very very useful. Or it's such a small use case, and then it's but it's, it's very useful. It's called Frozen Record. Actually, it started from Shopify. Uh, one is called Yemo Record in Shopify, and then this person called Byroot. I think he's a quite famous Ruby person. Uh, but I forgot his full name already. That then he he implemented it on his own law, uh, and he called it frozen record. So 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 actually, it's a very simple gem, but it's to it's like an active record interface to read uh, and query static YAML files. I'm sure we all have this use case before. Is that we have. Uh, we have data, like static data, that we don't actually need to feed it into the database. It can just be a, a YAML, YAML file to save the data. But then the problem is that then we have to use the YAML, uh, the Ruby YAML like, library to go and read. Then it's also sometimes not very nice now because it reads like a, like a hash sort of thing that you just using Ruby Ruby code to traverse it and then read data. So that's why I found this uh, very, I personally, when I, when I saw this gem, I thought, wow, very good. Uh, confirm and everybody will have encountered this kind of use case before. So what is it good for? Actually, it's just, if you choose to store static data in a YAML file, for example, like, uh, public holidays of the year. It doesn't change very often, right? So you don't need to see it into a database or create a database table and see. You can just have like, like a list of public holidays for this year. And then you you can just read the YAML file. Or another example is like, if you go Ruby SG, the list of companies, it's actually not a lot. Okay, it's not a, not say very little, but then it's also not like very, very a lot. Then, then you see in the database also like a bit weird because it doesn't change, it hardly changed. Now. So then I think this is also a very use, good use case now, which is already a use case because I went to the repository and changed it, changed it out from the YAML file and then I use, use a frozen record on it. Yeah. So these are the good, very simple use cases now. So actually how to use it? is very easy also, it's like active record. Then you have a class, which is also the pl plural of the, the term, public, for example, public holiday, and then you inherit frozen record base. Then you can call, uh, then you have to set the base path. So here, frozen record base path, then you set it to the folder that contains the public holidays.yaml, the Oh, sorry, the class name is singular, the record YAML file name is the plural version. Then you will just read, and then you can call public holiday dot or public holiday dot first dot last on it. And then you can even query query data. So, 
So on this is also very similar to Active Record. In that Active Record, the database table is the plural, mm -hmm. right? Now is the the file that contains the data is plural, and then the class name is singular, and then in, instead of inheriting active record base, you inherit frozen record base. Yep. So, um, so you can call all is a very straightforward one. So the the thing is, there's a limit frozen record. What it aims to replicate is the non-string type one. For example, you see this example A, like where ID smaller equals and question mark, right? This kind is like the string string type query interface. Then it doesn't, uh, it cannot do all this now. Um, because all this actually compiles to SQL, right? But then there's no really a SQL here. So then like the very common finder methods are like find, find by ID, uh, first, last, exist, all this now, which I think we are all very uh, familiar. Then there is also like where, or not or order limit offset or this. Just that it doesn't use the string type. So you probably you can only call like where uh, colon and then like a value where like pu uh, published equals to true or something like that. Very simple one. And it also supports some calculation like count plug IDs, maximum, minimum, some average, some uh, some average count. Like all this also very simple. But um, although it's not like the exhaustive list, but it's also good enough to do a lot of things. Uh. Yeah, so I do have a live demo, a very, very simple demo. So let me, uh, oh, I should share my screen. Okay, let me share my screen. Screen, let's not share. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I have um. Why is it not opening? Sorry, my computer a bit lagging. <laughs> Running too many things now. This one. No way. Oh no. Okay, please bear with me. Please bear with my computer. <laughs> I think I'm running to the the camera is taking up too much. Click this. Okay, here. Okay, not yet. Loading. So okay, so this is the public holidays file is here in the same directory. I, I just put it in the same directory as this file. Lah. So then, uh, then I just, this is the same example inside the class. Then you can call all uh, to array first, last. I think all this, you're probably very, very familiar already. So if I do Ruby, I'm coding the RB. Oh, let me know if you cannot see. So like things you call public holiday dot all, then okay, this looks slightly different now. Huh? This all, but you call like two a, you can see this one probably very familiar already. Public holiday holiday dot all dot club name. Then you it is is this one then is about the same law. No? Then you can do public. Uh, and then one one good thing is that actually if you see I have an example here it's fine by date you realize that like although my public holiday record here is all string no? but it will auto detect that it's a date and then when you when you try and uh, find by right you can use a date object to find it uh, and then you still can find it so I find that this use case is, I believe a lot of people have this use case law, that you have some static file that you also don't want to put inside a model, then you can use this. I think it's very, very helpful. Okay. So it's just one interesting gem that I found. I hope that uh, you all find useful. That's all for my talk for today. It's before eight o'clock, yeah. So, yeah, that's it.
Then, other than that, for today, just gonna don't have really long. It's just like that long. So it's like super fast. And then, since not much people write, also don't need really job shout out. But this time I want to make an advertisement. Is that the next meetup is 20th of August. So uh, the meetup event is out. The GitHub, GitHub issue is out. So please, uh, I mean, if you, are, you, if you, are, you want to attend, then uh, please go and RSVP or go and follow the issue. That's it. That's it for today. Um, yeah, really very, very little uh, Ruby content. But okay. <laughs> oh.